Joining me for a closer look at the DPRK and the international response is Paul Carroll from the Plowshares Fund. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, Elaine. There are plenty of warnings and obviously evidence that a nuclear test will happen. What happens after? Will action by the DPRK actually prompt more than just words from the U.S., China, and other allies? In other words, are more sanctions the highest level of punishment that can be imposed? Well, in the immediate aftermath of a test, unfortunately, that is the case. We, we as, a, as a team, if you will, the South Koreans, Japan, the United States, and China, are somewhat limited in what we can do. The, the real uh, factor here is China, whether, in fact, they are prepared to do more than play lip service and urge everyone to stay calm. Um, China is not quite an ally of the North, but they are their largest benefactor. And so recent days, we've seen China making some signals that they may, in fact, be at their, at their wit's end, if you will, and they've said that there will be consequences. Now, that remains to be seen, but that would be the hope. Well, what will constitute a successful test? Everyone's watching and waiting, and there always seems to be a little difference of opinion about the outcome of these things. Well, I would, I would say there's two things to consider for a, a success. There's the technical success. Did it, in fact, detonate? Was there a substantial nuclear yield? Um, if you ask people in the, in the technical or military community, the last two tests were, were almost dismissed as um, failures. The first one was, was something less than a, a kiloton, which is about 1,000 tons of TNT, and really um, not nearly the scale and the explosive force of even even Pakistan and India's first tests. The second test in 2009 is estimated somewhere between two and maybe five kilotons. Again, not a very good track record. The third test, I would, I would say, if you're getting into the 10 or 20 kiloton range, which will destroy a city, then you're in a whole new arena of their capability from a technical point of view. From a political or a strategic point of view, a third test, if it goes unanswered or is only answered by more sanctions and China really not doing anything, then North Korea will have gotten away with another nuclear test with very little repercussion. Well, and Paul, there has also been a lot of attention on what's happening in Iran with potential nuclear ambitions there as well. So if the DPRK does go through with this test, what signal will that send to an Iran? Well, it, it, it's more than a signal. What, what would happen if, let's say there's a third nuclear test in the days or even weeks ahead, and it's a, a technical success. Suppose it, it detonates with the force of, of a Hiroshima or a Nagasaki. That would be extremely destabilizing for the region. It would be clearly a concern because it would demonstrate that the North is committed to continuing to advance their nuclear capability. But it wouldn't fundamentally change the nature of the threat overnight. We, they still do not have the capability to mount a bomb on a missile or even a, a very nimble aircraft. Um, so the immediate, the day after, if you will, wouldn't change the nature of the beast uh, with respect to American security or even very much regional security. The real concern is they become a much more attractive uh, seller or proliferator, if you will, that they have worked with Iran on missile technology and to demonstrate a better nuclear capability. And in fact, if, it be, if, if it's determined that it's a uranium bomb, then the Iranians who are enriching their own uranium would look to the north and say, hey, these guys have figured it out. They know how to actually make a bomb out of uranium. Let's talk some more. And that really is the is the more immediate threat from a North Korean nuclear program that's advancing. Okay, Paul Carroll from the Plowshares Fund, thank you so much for joining us.